Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Peter chapter three. Likewise, that's kind of funny because in chapter two we left off talking about Jesus Christ and suffering. Then likewise, ye wives, suffering, be in subjection to your own husband. But Paul said that if any obey not the word Bible they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives you say what's that talking about conversation is not talking it's the conduct without the word those are people that are lost Peter is saying here a wife that is subjection to her husband obeys her husband is a strong word to those who do not believe the word. That's remarkable. We've got to put the very fact is when we're talking about salvation, we are talking about the word. No word, no salvation. And what is the strongest word that we get from this passage is a wife conduct of her husband. If she don't obey her husband, people see it, they're not going to listen. While they behold your chase, that's pure before marriage, conversation, conduct your life, coupled with fear. Now, while they, those that are lost, your, that's the ones that are saved, your conversation coupled with, there's fear. That's what's missing today in America. As far as I see witnessing on the street, people don't fear God. And yet here are people who do not believe the word and they do fear God. And they look at a woman and the fear comes even more. That's, that's missing in America today. <coughs> All right, for the woman who's adorning, let it not be that the outward adorning of plating of hair, of wearing of gold, or putting on apparel. Now, that's now, he's not saying go out there naked, is he? He's not saying go out there with your hair a mess. He's not saying, you know, do yourself a little good. But don't... don't yeah, don't go out there looking... Don't spend three hours. I know a woman in the morning, she opened up this... this I wouldn't make her describe it as a suitcase. And it was just filled with powders and potions and Jezebel... Jezebel painted her face because here comes here comes this guy to see her. I mean, there's nothing wrong with look, women looking yourself good. But don't overdo it. And then when it comes like this, being subjected to your husband, your husband should tell you, this is what I want you to wear, this is what I don't want you to wear. So don't put too much effort on your wear going out. But then again, don't put too little of effort. But... Let it be the hidden, oh, we got to change that one, man of the heart. Let's talk about the women. Inside you, there's a man, because you came from Adam. In that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, ooh, that's not a Baptist woman, which is in the sight of God, a great price. Uh-oh. 
when you're talking about a godly woman, and we're looking at a godly woman, she is dealing with ungodly people. And in her heart, she has the heart of a man. Let it be the hidden heart of the heart in that which is not corruptible. That's an interesting remark there. A woman's heart. Even the ornament of a meek, not weak, you're meek. And a quiet spirit, you don't open your mouth all the time. I'm not saying you don't talk at all. Which is in the sight of God. When God sees a meek, quiet woman, to him that's a great price. That's interesting. For after the manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, here's an example, adorned themselves. So they said, they did adorn themselves. They wore bracelets. Yeah. Being a subjection unto their own husbands. That's what their husband said. The husband said, hey, stop. You look like a floozy. It was usually gifts that their husband gave them. Yeah. Well, look at Rebecca. You gave her earrings, gave her gold. She went home and said, look, look at what this guy gave me. So it's not not wear jewelry. Just don't make yourself a show. I mean, a woman ought not to look like one of those disco balls. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are. Now I would that would be an assumption of Jewish. But then again, Paul writes to us in Romans that Abraham's of our family. We are of Abraham by faith. We have the same faith that Abraham did. We, we studied that. And women, the thing is, well, am I supposed to blame my husband? Abraham told Sarah twice, tell him you're my sister. I don't want to die for you. And she did. And God rewarded her. Abraham got the chastisement. God protected her. her. Given honor, uh, uh, wait a minute. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well. If you don't do well, then you're in trouble. And are not afraid with any amazement. Yeah, but you have the power of prayer. When you, if, whatever your husband does, you got the power of prayer. Likewise. Ye husbands. Now we're going to get the husbands. Dwell with them. Who? The wives. Well, me and my wife, we have different housings. Dwell with them. According to knowledge. Which you know. And men don't know much about women. Giving honor unto the wife. Look at that. That old battle axe, that old, that old lady. That old, that's not honor, my friend. That's dishonor. And if she's the old lady, um, usually men are older than the women in the marriage. That makes you the old fart. I can admit, everyone's a, the old lady. Well, I like to giggle because guess what you are now? Yeah. I grew up with that word, uh, battle axe. It wasn't for a wife, it was just uh, ridiculous. Giving honor unto the wife. Where else do we see that? Oh, well, children, obey your parents. Honor your parents. A male child should grow up honoring his parents so he can honor his wife. Kind of, it's, same, it's the same word, right? It didn't change. And the daughter should honor her parents. So she honor her husband. Well, like I said, just the husband says honor the wife. That's important. Because it seems like when a man gets married to a woman, what I've seen is the old lady, you know, she blah, 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 blah. No. You ought to treat her like you treated your mother. Because that wife is supposed to take over the, the wifely, the, the motherly duties. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, iron your clothes, wash your clothes, fix. 
Actually, the, the wife is supposed to love her, love her her husband more than the mother loved because there's even a more intimate. So you disfavor your wife by mistreat her. And there's a lot of men out there who love the mother, their mother than their wife. I can't remember what verse it is, but it's of the older women to teach. Mm -hmm. Yes. The younger women to love their That's husbands. Timothy. I believe it. Second Timothy. And this is lacking. Among Christian husbands, from what I hear and listen to him talk, I'm not talking about the unsaved. They're, they're just wicked. But the wicked, you know, they got excuse. They don't have a Bible. So the weak, uh, so give honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel. Now, what is that? It means you can beat on her. It means you can mouth off at her. You can disrespect her. You know it's not disrespect. You know it's not giving honor because we just read honor. Well, if I go back to Genesis chapter 3, I can find out what that 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 weaker vessel is. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. And thy conception, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. That's enough sorrow right there. Because husbands are not what they are. And he shall rule over thee. So what is this weaker vessel? At that moment of drop of the hat, next thing you know, she starts crying. What, what the heck did I say? What the, what's going on here? That's what God built in her. It's that time of month. Yeah, that's the time of the month. Okay. It's that time of month. But she's the wicker vessel. What are you supposed to do? No, no. You don't go get a hotel. You don't get a motel away from her. Because the Bible says you're supposed to dwell with her. They're not unclean in grace. There are there are places I've heard in the island nations where that time they dwell in a, se in a separate hut. Well, if you're a Christian and you're reading the Bible, it says dwell with them. They're not unclean no more. If they have that issue. Now, if you're Old Testament, then they're unclean. But you're to dwell with them and you're dealing with a weaker vessel. They're going to cry easy. They're going to have you more emotions. <coughs> <coughs> Things are going to bother them more than it bothers you. You've been told by the Bible. And if you're listening to this, vi this video and you we follow along with the Bible, you now have been told that she is weaker than you are. And America has ruined that woman by making her the welder, making her the steel worker, making her build uh, buildings and, and work heavy machinery and all that. That's not healthy. That's not healthy. <coughs> now, I'm not talking about strength here yet, but yes, I am talking about strength. We're talking about, you know, uh, sorrow. That's what I'm but also, a woman has not to be lifting 100-pound weights. The only iron she needs comes in a pill because she needs iron. She's the F-E male. F-E means iron. The female. She has no business doing what women do in America today. And as being hairs together. Well, who are we talking about? What's the together? The husband and wife. Of the grace of life. You and your wife are to walk together in the life of Jesus Christ. She that tarries at the stuff gets the same rewards you get when you go out and serve God and do what you do. That's what the Bible says. She is part of you, and she and you are part of her. You are one. Watch this one. That your prayers be not hindered, husband. You mistreat that wife, and your prayers are not going to be answered. Kind of interesting, isn't it? And by the way, if the Catholic... I got, you know, I always got to say about the Catholic... I grew up in that mess. My family followed me in hell from that. But I got, if this is the Catholic truth... That Peter was the first pope. What's he doing talking about husbands? They can't marry. He had a Peter had a wife and a mother-in-law. Oh, Finally. Finally. We still got two more chapters to go. Finally. Oh, wait a minute. We're talking about husbands and wives. 
Phew, finally, get this over with. Peter realized he, he stuck his foot in it. <laughs> I better finish up, close up. And that's a lot how a lot of men feel. That's how a lot of American women feel. We have to just seven verses. An American male and female be like, I don't want to hear that. Finally, be ye all of one mind. This is all Christian. One mind. Unity. So you don't have more than one Bible. You don't have more than one way of salvation. Be of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Yeah, that guy is a six of cute cross with a few. He's pitiful. No, no, that's not what that means. <laughs> Be courteous. Thank you. Please. No thank you. Nothing wrong with manners among the church brethren. Mr. Mrs. Not rendering evil for evil. That's the old man. That's the law. That's the golden rule, you know. I'll do unto you as you did unto me. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Or railing for railing. But counterwise, all right? In opposure, what I just said, evil, evil, railing, railing, give him a blessing. Jesus said, if your enemy hungers, give him food. If he thirsts, give him water. Heat the coals of fire in his bald head. I added both. Knowing that ye are there unto called. That ye should inherit a blessing. So the golden rule that is taught in schools and taught in families does not get you a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, that's what we all want. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Uh, Peter, you didn't read what James said, did you? Peter, you need to go talk to James for a minute there. But yet, Peter has backed up what James says about the tongue, evil. And his lips that they speak no guile. You want a good life? You want good days? Shut up! Greek. Let him eschew evil. That means avoid, get rid of, run from. Job. Well, look what happened to Job. Yeah. Look what Satan takes notice of. And what's the Bible say? All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But in that persecution, you can have joy, you can have love. You, I think I heard that somewhere. The fruit of the Spirit. Let him skew evil and do good. Now, isn't that plain? As a Christian, we're supposed to do good. We have, we have the license. We can do whatever we want. But what are we supposed to do? Good. Let him seek peace. Now, I've known some Christians that peace, you know, and that's spelt the wrong way, you know, uh, an armament, a cult, a magnum. That's the wrong piece. This piece is you don't need that, that gun. You try to resolve your matters without the gun. And ensue it. Pursue. That's what it means. Run after it. Run after peace. So in other words, if you offended somebody, turn your butt around and go back and say, Madam, sir, use manners, I, 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 I offended you. I have done wrong. I, I truly, what can I do to make it right? I believe it was, um, I can't think of his name now. They hate his name. He's one of the generals of the South. Can't have the South. They're losing but he told a man one day, he says, I'll meet you Friday at such and such time. And he went off. That man turned his horse around, went back, went back to that guy and said, I got to apologize. I said, I'll meet you such and such time. And that's not the time I meant. I am greatly in error that what I told you. I am sorry. We got to make the peace. 
And you know what? Let's go back to verse 8 again. Father, be ye of one mind. Wouldn't that be great? Husband and wife? One mind to serve God? I know we're talking about Christians, but what about the marriage we've just been talking about? <coughs> Excuse me, I still got this cold. Having compassion one for another. Can we say that about a marriage? Love as brethren. There are some spouses that love the brethren more than they love each other. Be pitiful. Yeah, that's my husband. No, be nice. Be courteous. Open the door for her. Say thank you. Say that was a good meal. Not rendering evil for evil. Wait till that guy gets home. Or railing for railing. But counterwise, give a blessing to your spouse. Knowing that ye are therefore called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, that's what a marriage wants, let him reframe his tongue from evil. Shut up. In the Greek. And his lips that they speak no guile. What do you look like? You, you, wow. You know? Let him eschew evil. And do good. Him, him, him. The husband's the problem. Let him seek peace. Shut up. In the Greek. And then pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears, God's ears, are open unto their prayers. Now it says in Psalms in two or three places about the idol. They have ears but they hear not. I have a God that has ears and he listens. That's what makes my God of all gods. My God has ears that are turned into the prayers of his children. Now he may not always say yes. He may throw a little patience your way say not now. Are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Ooh. Uh, Psalm 7 11. The eyes of the Lord, I oh, don't know, that's Proverbs 15 3. The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. That face of God is not a statue, it's not hardened, it's not concrete, it's not wood, it's a live face. And who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? Who, who, who's going to do you wrong? Who is going to kill you? Fear him that's able to destroy the soul and body, Jesus said. Worst thing they can do to you, they can send you off to heaven a lot earlier. Then you get a crown. But... And if ye suffer for righteousness sake, underline that, happy are ye. Remember, this is the time of Nero. He hated Christians. And be not afraid of their terror. Terror. That's an interesting word. Look that one up in the dictionary. Neither be ye troubled. That's Peter. I mean, he, he's coming after you. He's going to get us. He ain't going to destroy your soul. <coughs> but sanctify, set apart the Lord God in your hearts. See that again? Hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope, the hope, that is in you with meekness and fear he is speaking to save people. Nero's going to come. He's out the gates. He's going to kill it. What must I do to be saved? Oh, oh. Let me bring you to my pastor. Hey, I got somebody. Here's their phone number. Call them up. Here, here's my smartphone. Look it up. Uh-uh. And the thing is, you know, somebody goes, oh, I'm saved. Ask them. Say, hey, here's the Bible. Tell me how you got saved. See if it matches. 2 Timothy 2.25. Having a good conscience. They didn't have a good conscience in the, in the law we read in Hebrews. I got a good conscience. Satan tries to mess that up every once in a while. Hey, wait a minute, that's under the blood. 
And Lord, just in case that wasn't under the blood, I put it under the blood. But if it's under the blood, you don't remember it. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Thank God. And if it wasn't under the blood, it's now under the blood. You're faithful and just to forgive them. That whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, you are so wicked, but you're righteous. They speak to you as you're evil. They may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Now, where is that going to happen? At the great white throne judgment. Imagine them standing before God. Blah, 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 blah. Or no, it'll be like, they'll be God, I never knew. I had no idea, God. Why are you going to cast me hell? You never told me. Every family step up. Do you remember these people? Oh, yeah, they yelled, they screaming hard. Oh, they just ruined my tomato business. I thought you said you didn't know. Well, I didn't know. What did he preach? Oh, they were right. Yeah. He preached. I don't. Oh, man, he just kept on saying, Jesus, 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 the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, hell, 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 hell. Can you imagine, I don't know, maybe this is off the wall. Can you imagine that person going to be condemned to hell, turn to us and say, I'm sorry? You know what I was saying to my customers about you? You know what names I called you? No, you didn't call me nothing. Jesus takes it personally. Acts chapter 9. They will give an account to what they say and think about you before God one day. And if they don't apologize to me, which I don't care, they will apologize to God because Jesus told Paul, why persecute me? Paul didn't do nothing to Jesus. Your good conversation in Christ. Now, you know that word doesn't mean talking to Christ. It's your life. You know some of the things, this thing you talk about with your good life? You didn't steal from the company. You gave the company the full time. You didn't go to the office parties. You didn't hang out with that, that, that busty girl in that office. In fact, I think I remember correctly, you tried to avoid that woman at all costs. You didn't lie or cheat. You told the truth. You were a Christian lawyer and you stood before that judge and you actually told the truth. For it is better. Ooh, you like better things? If the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. Uh oh, uh oh, we are not, we are now at another will of God. You need to mark these. What is the will of God? I, I had, why do you see keep saying that? Because I had people come to me, what is the will of God? That you suffer for well doing. <clears throat> and then we just read that the other night. And God said, I like that. Well, God, wait a minute, I just lost everything. Yeah, I like that. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer. Excuse me, sir. If you believe Jesus Christ, your life is going to be wonderful. They're going to love you. This is going to be great. That's a lie from hell. You ain't saved if you say that prayer. You're not. I'll say that for sure. 99% sure. Somebody promised you... A great, wonderful Christian life if you were to say this prayer. 99% I am sure you're not saved. Because the will of God in your life, Christian, if you're going to do right, is to suffer. For Christ. Now look what Peter does. He lays it out. Boom, boom, boom. Then you know how he closes this section? You know how he closed last night's section? You know how he closed chapter 1? I'm going to show you Jesus Christ. So Peter lies with us. There is no excuse because there is an example. Who was the first person that Jesus called into his ministry? Peter, wasn't it? And his brother Andrew? So Peter traveled the first day as the disciples... The three and a half full years. 
He has the right to tell us what Jesus did. If I could, I can't. This is the world. But if I could, if I wanted to prove, Peter, uh, prove Jesus Christ, I could bring Peter into a courtroom of any court in America, including, <coughs> including the Supreme Court in the United States of America, and I could bring Peter on the witness stand, and he will prove to the court in the United States that Jesus Christ is real. You say, Peter's dead in the grave. No, nope, he's right here in my book, the Bible, which was in the courtroom until a few years ago. And when they missed the scope, uh, not the scope, uh, yeah, the scope's tile, trial. When they debated creation with evolution, they did not ask Peter on that trial. Excuse me, sir, I'd like to call my next witness. Who are you going to call? I like to call First Peter and put him on the seat. We need to get an orator and read First Peter to the court and jury. First Peter tells us there is a God. It shows that the scope said they did not bring the Bible, and that's why they lost. You say, what would you do? I would ask Peter. I would, I would have the courtroom read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Genesis to the entire courtroom to prove there's God. Well, there were people in the courtroom that didn't believe the Bible. Then they don't need to believe in America because the Europeans that set America, what it is, was based upon the Bible, the Geneva Bible, that came across with the pilgrims. Now, if you don't believe the Bible, get in your own boat and go find your own company without the Bible, without God. That was the foundation of America. And the freedom thereof was set forth in Newport, Rhode Island with John Clark and Obadiah Holmes. And you are celebrating the freedom that my fathers in the Bible gave. And if you don't want to do that, you don't want the Bible, go find your own country. Peter says there is a God. And Christians, you cannot say, no, I don't know. I can't do it because watch. For Christ also has suffered once for sin. That just for the unjust, I can't suffer. Jesus did. Oh. You're going to apply Christian to your name? Yeah. You don't want to suffer? Well, no. Don't put Christian on your name. Because Christian was a name given at Antioch to retort and to make fun of and mock the Christians. It wasn't a really good name. So as a Christian, my Christian, my Christ, suffered for sins. I'm a sinner. I'm suffering for doing good. I ought to be suffering for my sins. That he might, Jesus might, bring us to God. The mediator between God, the man, Christ Jesus. Being put to death in the flesh. His, he had a body. How do you like that? He had a body that was nailed to that cross, and on that body was placed all, every single sin. But quickened by the Spirit. Quickened means made alive. There's God, there's the Holy Spirit, there's Jesus. There's the Trinity again, Peter. Peter believes in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. By which, the Spirit, Jesus Christ, also He, Jesus Christ, went and preached into get this the spirits Ooh, are there ghosts <laughs> the spirits in prison well that's a interesting statement second timothy 2 4 and the rich man died and he's lifted up his eyes in hell It looks like more than the soul and goes into hell. It looks like the spirits. Now, Jesus, when he died, he didn't go to jail in Jerusalem. Hi, guys. And the prison wouldn't have been in Abraham's bosom, even though they were stuck there, because he set them free. And when he died, they came out, walking around Israel. Hi, guys. You really messed up this place. 
You imagine old Samuel sitting like, You always go off on when you talk about this. Yeah, I know. Imagine Samuel sitting there at the park bench. And I was a little boy right over there with Eli. <laughs> Sorry. I like those memories. So, prison. All right. Let, what's this prison? What's the Casper the Ghost in the prison? Which sometimes were disobedient. Okay, these spirits in prison were sometimes disobedient. They did not listen. Well, that fits all mankind. When once that when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. What's the long suffering in the days of Noah? From the time that God said, Noah, I am fed up with this world. I'm gonna drown it out with rain. That's when water is going to come down from the sky, Noah. I know you don't know what rain is, but I'm going, to, I'm going to flood the entire earth out. At that moment, he said, I want you to build an ark. Here's the blueprints. I want you, The animals are going to come to you, gather up food, and I want you to preach to them. Peter's going to tell us later on that Noah preached. The long suffering of God is here from the time that he told Noah, this is what I'm going to do, until the time when God shut that door. That's the long suffering. Now, was that event there? Which sometimes were disobedient. What would be the disobedience there? In re in relations to Noah, they didn't get in the ark. So what happened to those people that were judged for not listening to his word by Noah, the preacher, the street preacher, about salvation? Get in this ark and you'll be saved. They went to hell. That's they're in prison. And Jesus walked down into hell then and preached to them. When Jesus died, now this is a heresy, people. Not only did he die, according to the description, he went down into hell. And guess what he did with my sins? He left them there. He said, I've got to carry these sins and deposit them. In sins belong in hell. Christ said, I'm going to leave these here. Oh, by the way, uh, devils, come here. Oh, Jesus, are you become the tormentors before our time? Oh, my, oh, 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 no, just calm down, calm down. Not yet. You want to call everyone that's in this place right now? You want to call them for bring up the chairs? I got a little message for them. Hi, guys. I'm Jesus Christ. Had you listened to the prophets? Had you listened to the word of God? Had you done what God told you to do? You wouldn't be in here. Now you're going to stay in here. I got a bunch of people over there in Abraham's bosom. I got to set them free. Bye. Oh, I have the keys to death and hell. Now that I have these keys, you're totally damned for life. Bye. How's that for a message? And why are they there? Because they disobeyed God. And people today will be in hell because they didn't get in the ark. No. Because they disobeyed the message that we preach as Noah preached. Get in Jesus Christ to be saved. Oh, I don't think that's it. And guess what? You're going to hell. And it looks like your spirit goes with you. Your body doesn't go, but oh, wait till your body joins up with you at Revelation 20. When, I forget how it says, but is it the body or something like that? It says death and hell gave up the, check out Revelation 20. It said death and hell gave up something. I forget what it was. You better believe it. So Jesus went in hell. So, once the long suffering of God, that time with Noah, waited in the days of Noah, Noah to finish that ark. You know, sometimes Noah said, Well, where is that shipment? <sighs> two more days? Come on, I gotta build this ark. You want that two more days? Was God saying, I'm gonna give him one more, two more days. I'm gonna give him two more days to get saved. You ever think about that? God's not willing that any should perish, right? These are times that God told Noah, hey, just, just take a break today. Maybe, maybe maybe somebody will come. Maybe someone will listen to you. you While know, the, what? You know it took the sloths from the turtles forever to kill Noah. Yeah. Woodpeckers kept making holes. Yeah. Kept telling the flies, only two, only two. Rabbits had a trouble. We had to throw them overboard. Come on. Guys, stop it. <laughs> While the ark was a preparing. While the ark was preparing was a long-suffering God. You say, well, why hasn't the rapture happened today? 
You know there were people saying that in 1986? Yeah. It was what? 88 reasons why he came in 88. And there's been people every year saying it. But if he came before April 25th, 1986, I would have gone to hell. I thank God he waited. Sometimes when we say, Lord God, come now, there's, there's a sinner out there God knows who needs to be saved. But we're, we want that hope, we want that glory, but we got to think about that sinner too. One day, that, that last sinner will get saved and Jesus will come. What if that last sinner is holding out because you won't do nothing? It's interesting. Because while the ark was preparing, within, wherein few, what's few? That is, eight souls were saved by water. Now, do you see where they run to this verse? Say, baptism saves. What damned their souls in Noah's day? The flood. What's the flood? Water. Water is what killed all the disobedient people. The people that died by that baptism, they didn't get saved. They went to hell. They're in hell. And Christ went to preach to them as disobedient spirits. This is a baptism that kills. This is taking someone with a Polish baptism, and I'm Polish, like I said, you dunk them three times, you pull them out twice. Now, the light figure. The light figure. Hebrews 9, 24 and 11, 19. The light figure of Noah. Whereunto even baptism does also now save us. Now see, baptism saves. But what we're talking about is death. We're not talking about the water. And what is the death we've been talking about? Verse 18. Christ. So when when Mrs. Zebedee comes up, to, Jesus says, well, what, what that I should do for you? Oh, let my son sit in the right hand and left hand. You don't know what you're asking. Can you be baptized with the baptism I'm going to be baptized with? And they're like, yeah, we can do it. He goes, yeah, you are. You're going to die a horrible physical death like I did. Sometimes baptism is death. Not water. And I am saved by the death of Jesus Christ. He died. Some people say that when they put him in that tomb and his body hit that cold slab, he woke. That was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're a fool. You can't have a resurrection unless, unless it died. The like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us, verse 18, the death of Christ. Nowhere in here does it mention Jesus getting baptized by John. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, in order to have the resurrection of Jesus Christ, what must you have? You must have the death of Jesus Christ, and that's the baptism. Who is gone into heaven, Acts chapter 1, and is at the right hand of, hand of God, Acts chapter 1. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Boy, did he drop a bomb there. That's, wait a minute, Peter, that's it? That's all you're going to learn about? Wait a minute. More? John will finish what goes on in heaven. You know, John, in the book of Revelation, when we get there, Lord willing, you know what Peter doesn't finish here? I'll give you one aspect before we get to the book of Revelation, Lord willing. You know what wonderful thing we're going to see when we get to heaven afterward, judge the judgment seat of Christ? We're going to watch Michael kick devil's butt out of heaven, out of heaven and those third of those angels. There was a war in heaven, and Satan and his angels were cast. We're going to watch that. And it says right after that, everybody in heaven is going to shout hallelujah and have a good old grand old party. I'm going to witness that. Amen. And this story also ends like the prodigal son. 
The son come back. He got right with the father. The father loved him. He, he threw a party. He gave him the best clothes. And that, did that party ever stop? No. And what Peter's saying right now, guess what? What Christ done is never stop. He's never going to be ever dethroned. How's that for a finish? So everything that happens to us happened to Jesus. Let's fight. Let's be strong. Let's go in the glory of the Lord.